What if I told you that in 2019 you could buy a driver that's won on the PGA Tour, has a carbon crown, an adjustable loft, ultra thin titanium face for more ball speed and looks pretty awesome for under 350 quid. Just what is the most underrated driver of 2019? Let's do it and let's do it now. Everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel and this is your very first time watching my content, first of all, welcome to the channel. On this channel, I bring you guys daily golf related content that helps you raise your game, lower your handicap, and hopefully just gets you enjoying golf that tiny bit more. Today's review is a tiny bit different in that you guys don't even know what it is yet. Guys, I want you to smash those comments below. What do you think the most underrated driver of 2019 is going to be? Obviously this is opinionated, it's my opinion, you guys might have a different one, but a carbon composite crown, ultra fast titanium face, loads of shaft options, loft adjustments, and I'll give you a clue, in my opinion, it looks way better than last year's model. Guys, hit those comments below before I do the grand reveal. I'm gonna give you five seconds to just, go on, go down and just hit those comments below. Now let's do it. Hey guys, congratulations if you guessed that right. For me, the most underrated driver of 2019 has to be the Mizuno ST190. The price point's right, and you see for me, the best driver of 2019 is probably gonna go down, it's definitely gonna go down as the Cobra F9, isn't it? Because it's good, it's good looking, it's got shelf appeal, and the price is there. This thing's £349, and you might get a deal somewhere on a little bit less, as opposed to some of the other higher-end drivers which are charging nearly £500. With this, you get the SP700 Cortec Titanium Face, which basically means it's thinner, faster, and stronger than the face on last year's model. You get a 12 gram carbon composite crown, which allows seven grams to be redistributed around the face to help increase ball speed and lower spin rate. We have the amplified waved sole to increase ball speeds and reduce drop off from off center hits. And I know what some of you are thinking, when Alex Etcher spoke about the amplified waved sole, he actually jumped in the sea in the waves. I'm just not that committed to the cause, so I'll show this for you. Good, good work, Al. I mean, the list of technology that goes into this driver is pretty endless. We even have internal ribs in here known as the Harmonic Impact Technology, which as you can imagine is designed to make it sound and feel more powerful at impact. If you guys did get a chance to watch my one chance drive review when I was in Spain at Desert Springs, I hit one ball with each driver off a certain tee and it had one chance and one chance only. There were some huge competitors in that video, Titleist TS3, Ping G410, TaylorMade M5, loads and loads of big name drivers, expensive drivers. Anyone tell me which one won? Can't seem to remember. This consistency of ball fly is just... Right, this is getting boring now. So basically you have a driver packed with technology that's cheaper than most other drivers on the market bar the Cobra F9. It's had a win on the PGA Tour with Keith Mitchell. There's players that aren't being paid to use this driver on the tours using this driver, which is pretty much a first for Mizuno. And it leads me to think, why is this thing going so far under the radar? Why is, it, why is no one talking about it as much as the Cobra F9, as the TaylorMade M5, as the Titleist TS project? Hmm. You see, Mizuno have a huge reputation in making beautiful, fantastic, awesome irons. But when it comes to drivers, that reputation isn't particularly there, is it? I remember this driver. Oof. And that one. Oh, Mizuno, what were you thinking? So for me then, they kind of stuck to what they were good at. They stuck to making quality, premium, forged irons. 
until now. Now Mizuno are at the table, they're dining with the big boys and they are showing that they can create the ball speed, they can create the forgiveness, they can lower the spin. This model is also available in the ST190G which has the movable weights in there. You see this one costs more money and for me that's where maybe some of the brands are starting to upset people, upset you guys, upset the players, upset the golfers, upset, I'm not going to call you customers because that's not what you are. But they're starting to upset you because you put a couple of movable weights on there and you think, well, why am I, why am I paying £100 more for a few movable weights? Now, obviously, you're paying for the R&D, you're paying for the guys who invented the tech and, and all that. But for me, this thing is fantastic. And like I said right at the beginning of the video, as opposed to last year's blue model, the ST180, this thing looks absolutely stunning. Let's take a look at the numbers. I've not actually done a full review on this, so I'm going to be interested to see how the numbers are. I've hit it mainly good. I've had one bad swing in there, but I think it might have been a misread, so I'm going to show you the numbers, and I'm going to take the misread out and show you the numbers properly. Let's do it. I think one thing definitely has to be said. I could have done with that at the YouTube Golf Day. All fairways. This is the one which I'm not too sure about. Look at that. Look at that. So numbers for the Mizuno ST190. As you can see, all ridiculously consistent to be fair, apart from that number four, which I'm going to take out in a minute because it didn't register all the numbers. Average in 273, but let's take out that number four because like I said, I'm not sure about that one. Not making a huge difference. Average 278, which on the whole is very, very good. Ball speed of over 160, which is frighteningly good. Spin rate averaging 26, which is absolutely spot on. I'm really struggling to find a negative for this driver. All the right shot shape that I'm looking for, that nice steady draw. So guys, I know what you're all thinking, looking at those numbers, why the hell aren't you gaming the Mizuno ST190? For me, it's not quite as powerful as the M5. When I've tested it personally, I don't know if it's because of the shafts, but... Oh, when I've tested it personally, the M5 just seems to creep past it a tiny bit. And also, I do prefer the look of the M5. I prefer how I can kind of see the difference between the top of the head and the face. With the black head going into the black face, sometimes when I'm out there on the golf course, I just struggle to differentiate the face from the head, and I don't like that. I know Mark, the mid-handicapper, didn't like that when he tested this as well. For me, the M5 just has the kind of silver top where you can see the face. This video isn't about the M5, but that's why I'm using the M5, really. Small detail, but it helps. So guys, there you have it. For me, the most underrated driver of 2019, the Mizuno ST190. The price is right, the technology is right, tour players are using it, must be right. And not to mention, it looks pretty damn hot. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, and you haven't hit that subscribe button already, come on, you know what to do. Smash it, you don't have to smash it, tap it, or don't tap it more than once, because then it'll unsubscribe and that won't work. But also make sure you leave me a like if you've enjoyed that video. Comment below, what more content would you like to see moving forward into 2019? It has been an awesome year so far, and I'm loving it. I hope you guys are too. Also, if you commented below and you got it right, well done. Apart from that, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.